Hi, welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. In this video, we're going to talk about Veritas's PM-V11 tool steel. Recently, I found myself in the market for an upgraded plane iron for my 4.5 and 5.5 bench planes. After a lot of research, I landed on a blade from Veritas made out of PM-V11 tool steel. In this video, I tell you why I chose this plane iron over the competition and a little bit about what I've learned in the process. The process began with an attempt to cure several ailments of this new Stanley 4.5. I decided to give this Tay Tools 2 and 3 8 inch wide replacement plane iron a try. It's quite a bit thicker than the Stanley blade and at the time it was on sale. So I figured it's worth a shot. After prepping the plane iron, it did improve the performance of the Stanley by quite a bit. But I learned three things from my experience with that Tay Tools plane iron. One, I'm willing to pay a little more for a plane iron that's accurately pre-lapped at the factory. Two, I'm willing to pay a little more for an iron that requires less stropping. The Tay Tools plane iron takes a fantastic edge, but it dulls very quickly. And three, I do like a thicker plane iron than the thin iron that came stock with the Stanley. But at 11 hundredths of an inch, the Tay Tools plane iron was just too thick for the Stanley's plane geometry. It's better if the plane is designed from scratch to accommodate thicker blades. While researching my options, I found two broad categories of choices. Either one, buy a premium plane that already included a premium iron, or two, purchase a lower end plane, tune it up, and then purchase a premium replacement iron. Okay, so let's compare the pricing of some four and a half planes on the market today. If the plane doesn't already come with a high quality A2 iron, I'll assume that one will cost $50 to add it, and I'll add that to the total price of the plane. The Tay Tools 4.5 has been discontinued, but from memory, I recall that it cost about $90 new, and assuming adding a $50 iron to that, the total price is $140. The Rockler Benchdog plane, $199 base price. Again, upgrading the plane blade gives us $249. I can buy a 4.5 Veritas plane and choose an A2 option, and the price will be $275. Unfortunately, the Wood River doesn't come with an A2 iron, so I have to add $50 to the $229 base price to get $279. And of course, as we would expect from a premium plane manufacturer, the plane already comes with an A2 iron, so the final price is $360. For my hobby shop, I think it's pretty clear that purchasing a Tay Tools bench plane and then upgrading it with a premium iron is going to be the best value. Note, the Tay Tools 4.5 bench plane is no longer available. I think I may have purchased the last one as a scratch and dent item, so I'm listing the new price from memory. Also, it seems that Tay Tools is no longer listing their 5.5 bench plane. So I feel very fortunate to have grabbed these great values when I did. There are a number of manufacturers offering premium plane irons for Stanley Bailey style bench planes. The Tay Tool planes are patterned after the Stanley Bailey style planes. The two difference being that it's a screw cap instead of a lever cap and the plane geometry is from the factory designed to work with the thicker plane irons. Here are some of the options I found online for premium plane irons that would fit my four and a half Bailey pattern planes. The prices range from about $40 to about $85. There's a number of manufacturers offering these irons and there's a variety of tool steels used to produce them. Here things get a little complicated sorting through all the technical jargon. I did spend time researching terms like oil quenching, air quenching, powder metallurgy, cryogenic treatment, carbon, vanadium, chromium, etc. But wait, I'm trying to improve my woodworking hobby. I'm not trying to become a metallurgist. To fully master the steel forming processes and chemistry involved in tool steel making would require a dedicated long-term effort. And if I thought I could read a couple articles online and come out the other end with a full understanding of this topic, I'd be kidding myself. Anyway, a general level of understanding is all I really needed. I learned that tool steel manufacturers are trying to develop a sort of Goldilocks material. They want something that's hard enough to hold an edge, but not impossible to sharpen. They're also looking for a material that's tough enough to stand up to impact, but is also corrosion resistant. 
Personally, I'm not so worried about the corrosion properties of the steel used to make the plane irons. Based on a suggestion from Nick Angler's workshop companion videos, I've been placing these camphor tablets in my tool drawers. I drop one in and when it has completely evaporated, I just add another. The idea here is the camphor oil evaporates and then condenses on the colder tool steel, forming a slight rust inhibiting coating. So far, so good. I haven't noticed a spot of rust on any of my tools after I started doing this. One of the best resources I found that sort of sums up this Goldilocks balance of properties is a three axis chart on the Lee Valley website. It plots ease of sharpening, edge retention, and impact resistance on three axes. According to the article accompanying this chart, the values plotted here were measured during extensive testing and evaluations performed by Veritas. I found the side-by-side -side plotting of these test results made it easy to compare these tool steels. For example, I can immediately rule out M4 tool steel due to how difficult it is to sharpen. Just as a side note, as best as I can understand, M4 is a high-speed tool steel. High-speed steels are designed to retain a sharp edge even under the high heat that can result from continuous power tool use. So it's good for lathe chisels, drill bits, and shaper bits like this tongue and groove set. Also, I ruled out O1 tool steel due to its low scores for edge retention. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted something that required less frequent sharpening. The A2 steel is easier to sharpen than the M4 steel, and it holds an edge a little better than the O1 steel. So A2 seemed like a possible candidate. But as you can see in this chart, the PMV11 steel held an edge much better than both the A2 and O1 steels. It's more difficult to sharpen than the O1 steel, but about the same as the A2 steel. PMV-11 also performed very well in Veritas's impact resistance testing, which is probably not a major concern for plane irons, but that would be for a chisel. I will note that the O1 and A2 tool steel discussed in the Veritas article say nothing about cryogenic treatment. So I assume that the test results don't account for any of the improved properties that come with cryogenic treatment of O1 and A2 steels. At 58 bucks, the pricing for the PM-V11 iron is about middle of the road. And there's something else too, and that's customer service. Around the time I was researching these tool steels, I purchased a Veritas twin screw vise used on the Facebook marketplace. It was in great shape, but it was missing two minor parts. I contacted Lee Valley and found that they had excellent customer service and even sent me those two little parts for free. I couldn't believe it. To stay price competitive, it seems that manufacturers are loosening their quality control standards. In effect, they're making their customers part of their QA team. And I've seen this across several brands this year alone. So when, not if, I eventually encounter a bad tool, I need that company's customer service department to be able to take care of that problem. I can no longer afford to ignore good quality service when comparing tool options. Given the good experience with Lee Valley's customer service, the mid-range price of the plane iron, their informative and easy to understand article and chart, and not to forget the excellent testing results. I decided to go ahead and order the PMV-11 iron from Lee Valley. I've been using this Veritas plane iron in my Tay Tools 5.5 bench plane. And I have some lessons learned to share with you. As predicted by the three axis chart, the Veritas blade does not polish as easily as the Tay Tools iron. To my best estimate, I would say it takes about twice as many strokes to get about half the polish with this Veritas iron as compared to the softer Tate Tools iron. Also I find I have to apply compound to the strop each time. As compared to the Tate Tools blade, I could get away with only applying compound maybe every three or four times.
However, it does tune up on the strop and leaves a fantastic surface behind. Also, as predicted by the three axis chart, the iron remains sharper much longer. I can take at least twice as many strokes, if not more, before needing to stop and restrop. I think the better edge retention is worth it for bench planes, which have to be which have to be disassembled and reassembled each time you strop the blade. But for chisels, frequent stropping really isn't that bad because there's nothing to disassemble. I just reach over to the strop, give it a few strokes, and I'm back to work. I did encounter one problem with the new Veritas blade. found it very difficult to fit the cap iron. I would set the blade exposure where I wanted it, grip the sides tightly, and then tighten down the screw with a screwdriver. And no matter how tightly I held it, the cap iron would creep forward or the plain iron would creep backward, and the cap iron would end up past the blade with no blade exposed. After much difficulty, I finally figured out that the sharp edges on the side of the slots here were digging in to the very soft steel of this nut on the Tay Tools cap iron. So I took one of these small diamond files and I smoothed off the ridges that had been cut into the head of this bolt. I then took the same diamond file and I knocked off the corners of the slot on both sides. And that seemed to help things quite a bit. Although I'm now regretting that I didn't buy the upgraded Veritas cap iron along with the Veritas plain iron. Even though filing the corners of the slot here did make some difference, setting this cap iron is not foolproof. So that's why when I saw this Veritas cap iron with the PM-V11 blade from Veritas used on Facebook Marketplace at a pretty good price, I went ahead and bought it. This will allow me to put one iron in my five and a half and one iron in my four and a half. I think that's gonna make a pretty good combination. I also experienced a fitment problem with the Veritas cap iron and the yoke on the Tay Tools plane. The yoke was much wider in this direction than the slot, so the plane iron was not seating on the frog all the way. As you can see, this Tay Tools cap iron has bevels on the inside here and it's taller. To address that issue, I just did a little bit of filing here on the top side and bottom side of the yoke, and then I took a little needle file like this and rounded the corners of the cap iron slot. That seems to have addressed the problem and now the plain iron lays flat on the frog. I did experience an issue with the Veritas iron fitment to the Tay Tools plane. It turned out that the head of the lever cap screw was just a little too wide for the slot here on the Veritas iron. The head of this screw only fits through the access hole for the cap iron screw. The slot does not fit through. If we look at the screw on this modern Stanley 4.5, you can see that the screw head's much smaller and it fits on there no problem. So one of my options is to reduce the size of this screw. In order to reduce the size of the head of this screw, I've wrapped the threads in painter's tape and now I'm just going to run it against this file. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now. With those few minor tune-up issues out of the way, the Veritas iron now fits very well on the Tay Tools plane. So now that I've added the Veritas iron to the Tay Tools plane and I've used it for a while, it's time to ground check some of my assumptions earlier on. Was it a good deal to take this low-cost plane and add a premium iron? In my opinion, yes, but it did require additional tune-up to the cap screw, the yoke, and the cap iron in order to get it working well with this plane. So for my money, I'm really happy with what I've got. But what about the Veritas chart? 
Yes, in my experience, it is a little more difficult to sharpen. Well, I should say it's a little more difficult to remove metal. Actually, I think it's easier to sharpen because the plane was accurately lapped and ground from the factory. So that means I can quickly get an accurate edge on that blade. In regard to edge retention, yes, it does have better edge retention. I'm taking that plane apart and hitting the strop a lot less often. So yes, I'm very pleased and I'm looking forward to using these new tools in my shop. Well, that does it for this wood shop nerdery video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.